ahead and kick off a few more windows here and we will dive right into today's topic. Welcome everybody. Welcome to a Creative Cloud Wednesday. We're going to do a little Photoshop, just a quick tip. This one should not be a long one, but I say that every time and it turns out to be longer than I expected. So hopefully this will be just a short tip. Uh, hello, Sherelle. Hello, Miss Miss Adrian. Ad Adrian. Uh, welcome, everybody. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, Sedic, uh, the, the broadcast always shows in your local time. So whatever time it says for you, that's what time it is, a.m. or p.m. All right, looks like we're up and running everywhere. Let me get a chat window open over here so I can make sure I get people's comments that I can see. Colleen, you're always here. Welcome. Glad to have you once again. All right. And all the way from Cape Town. I love Cape Town. I hope to get back there someday. All right. I think we got everything. Yeah, let's have some fun. Exactly. Let's have some fun. That's exactly what we're going to do today. So let's kick things off officially. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. And it's my pleasure to be streaming to you live once again here on an impromptu Wednesday. Um, nice Doug is literally replacing the sky for a building and exterior right now. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to just give you a quick tip, another method, uh, if you will, will for replacing the sky in your image. And usually, <clears throat> if your um, sky replacement is easy, then you don't need a tip. Like if it's just if you're like you're it's the top of a building, it's all isolated, it's easy to select, it's easy to replace, no problem. But I'm gonna give you a couple pointers, especially when it's not easy. And this quick tip goes a long way. And I have to give credit where credit's due. I got this tip from my buddy Scott Kelby when I was watching an episode of The Grid. Um, they were talking about sky replacement. I was like, ooh, that'd make a good topic for one of my streams. So here we are. All right, so let me go ahead and dive in. Let me jump over to the computer so we can see what we're working with. Now, this one is uh, one of those kind of complicated situations because you'd want the sky to be in between all those little twigs and branches. And while it, you could get away with selecting white because this is pretty much consistently all the way white and replacing the white with something, what you end up with if the selection is not perfect is you end up with a little halo around all the branches. So then you gotta, you know, work with the selection and keep working and trying to get it just right. So that's why this tip is going to be a godsend for people that um, that have to work with intricate selections like this. So the the trick is to not make a selection. That's the, really the trick uh, when it boils down to it. So let me get my mouse over here. Let's get Photoshop up and let's let's drag a sky over. So I'm just gonna drag one of the skies over that I have in my library. And we're just going to go ahead and put that in place and scale it up a bit so it fills the whole scene. All right. And then we'll click away um, or just hit enter so that it locks it in. Now, if you were, again, trying to see through to that sky, or I'm sorry, to that tree, um, you could have made a selection first and maybe put the tree on top of it. And again, it, that can work. Because the, in this particular case, the image was fairly easy with all white with all white background. But when it's not an all white background, which we're going to see in the next example, it gets a little harder. Now, one of the tricks is to just simply use a blend mode. So you could like use a blend mode, like multiply, and boom, there you go, done. But the problem with multiply is that it makes your whole scene darker because multiply makes everything twice as dark. Uh, but that, that, that'll do it, just a blend mode, and that's like one of the fastest, quickest ways to do it. And now with Photoshop CC and being able to see the blend modes as you drag through, you can get some really, maybe some unintended effects that you weren't even trying for if you're trying to be a little bit more creative. If you don't want to just do a simple sky replacement, but you want to blend two images together, that's where the live preview of the blend modes really comes in handy. Like if you're trying to do something dramatic like this. Uh, but multiply, that would have done it. I'm not going to do the multiply trick. I just wanted to show it just in case. Instead, I'm going to use the blend if trick. 
And this is one of those kind of hidden features inside of Photoshop's layers panel. For example, if we look over at the layers panel, we'll see that I've got a layer, oh, I've got a layer called bright sun on top of background. That's the one with the sky and of course the background of the trees. So let me zoom out and click, if I double click to the right of the name, meaning don't, if you double click on a name, it assumes you want to change the name. But if I double click to the right of the name, that brings up this, the layer style panel. And inside the layer style plant panel, you have this blend if control at the very bottom. And if you've ever tried it, you probably were disappointed with the results because it looked, it probably looked bad. It probably didn't look great when you tried it. And here's why. When you just, first of all, you have four sliders here, four sets of sliders. Keep that in mind. You know, you don't know what you're going to get until you try them. So, for example, you might, you'll, you'll start dragging one. Oh, that's not it. Go to the next one. Oh, that's not it. Go to the next one. Oh, that's the one. You'll know immediately that you're dragging the right one because you'll start to see the results. So, if I start dragging the first one, that's not it because that's letting too much of the white in. So, that's, that's not the one. If I drag the one to the right of it, that's not the one. That's just completely getting rid of the clouds. So now if I go, that's this layer, if I go to the underlying layer and I drag the first one down there, oh hey, yeah, that's the one, that's the one we want. But look at the branches, especially the little ones. Look at how bitmapped and jagged they are. So you might you might try this and get like, oh, that, that would have worked so nicely if, if it didn't look so bad. And then you say, oh, well, maybe it's the one over here and no, it's not that one either. So you were on the right track. You were on the right one. But here's the hidden trick. When you just pick up this slider and drag it, technically you're dragging two sliders at the same time. If I zoom in, you'll see that each one of these handles has a little white line on it. And that white line is the separator. Actually, this handle breaks apart into two handles. And it breaks apart to smooth out the blending so that you're not dragging the whole thing over at once. So let me zoom out and let me show you how to break it apart. To break it apart, on the Mac, you'd hold down your Option key. On Windows, you'd hold down your Alt key. So when I hold down the Option key, watch what happens. It starts to blend it ever so nicely. And I can still pick up the other one and move it to kind of get it just right. So all four handles can be broken apart to blend more smoothly just by holding down the option or alt key. And that's the quick tip. That's the quick sky replacement trick for today. Use blend if wherever possible. Even if you have to do a little masking, that's okay. It was a whole lot easier than me trying to select that tree or the white background in, or in, in between all those twigs or those um, branches. Just using blend if, let Photoshop do all the work. All right, I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna give you another example because I'm gonna give you an example where you still need to do a little work after the fact because unfortunately life isn't always this easy. All right, so let's jump over to another one. Uh, let's say that we got this guy here. That now we can tell this is kind of the golden hour because we can see the kind of brown color that the, sky, that the sun is, um, is putting down. The sky is kind of blown out, so it would it's okay, but it would, might be cooler if it had a better sky there. And uh, we're going to do the same trick, but I'm going to show you what to do after the fact. Because just putting a blue sky on a brown hour will be a dead giveaway that you replace the sky. So, in your quest for sky replacement, what you should always be looking for is not only a good looking sky to replace your bad sky with, but also one that matches the time of day. So like that one we used earlier, middle of the day, bright sun poking through the clouds. That really isn't the case here. This is sunset or sunrise, I don't know, sunset probably. Um, so I would be looking for sunset skies to replace this one with. Now I'm gonna show you what to do in case you just don't have the best sky, this is what we're going to do. We're going to grab the sky that we used earlier. That's not the right sky for this. Clearly, middle of the day, sky at high noon or one o'clock. We're going to, again, scale this up. Not holding down the shift key. Love that. We're going to put this, we're going to poke the, the rays out 
and here we can kind of also, by the way, if you're looking for a quick placement trip, tip, a quick placement trick, you can lower the opacity while you're trying to figure out where you want to place it. So for example, if I look back at the old image, the sun was right about there, but I don't have to keep that. I'm just going to go ahead and move it up to where the rays themselves are not really the main subject. All right. And then once I get it where I want it, I'll go ahead and uh, increase the opacity back up to 100. Now we'll lock it in, which you could click away or click the enter key, and we'll do the same trick. Now again, if we did multiply, then we'd have to do some masking too, but multiply would work. But look at what it's doing to her and look at what it's doing to the, the rocks next to her. That kind of just doesn't work in this case. So instead of multiply, we're going to double click to the right of the layer name for the, for the new sky. We're going to use the same, well, is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. It's probably the same one. Yep, that's going to be the one. Ooh, look at, ooh, look at how good that's doing it. That's what we want, just to make sure it's not that one either. Okay, so it is this one. Pull it over and then separate it. Hold down your Option key and separate it out to blend it in ever so nicely. And you might need to pull this one way over. Now, that's working great for the sky. But what I'm, what I'm not liking is the reflection of that sky, because remember, that sky was too tall, so it, it came all the way down here. Now, I could have moved it up some more so it didn't come down here, or next best thing, uh, we just add a mask to it. So we'll just click the layer mask icon in the lower right-hand corner, we'll grab a brush, and we'll just make sure we're on black color. And we'll just paint it out of the things we don't want it on. I don't want it on these rocks or these um, branches, these leaves. I don't want it anywhere down here. So I'm just painting it out of the scene with a mask, just hiding it in that area. All right. So now we've got a better looking sky at the wrong time of day because the sky is blue and she's on a, obviously a, a sunset kind of scene. So, and look at, look at how good it did the hair, too. You see, you'll see the little strands of hair coming through. Blend if is the way to go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add one more, one more tip to our technique. We need to colorize that sky. We need to make that sky a different color to kind of match more of what we're seeing. All right, so what we're going to do, <laughs> plain God. No, Randy, plain Photoshop. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, come down to the Create New Fill, fill or Adjustment Layer button down here in the bottom right-hand corner, right next to the layer mask. So layer mask, Create New Fill. We're going to click, and we're going to create use a photo filter, just like you use on Instagram, just like you use on all those cool hip apps that you young people are using today. Did I really say that? Yes, I did. All right, uh, photo filter. The photo filter can be used to filter uh, the, all the images below, all the layers below. So I can use the warming filter. There's two or three warming filters. You can try which one to see which one you like best. Ooh, I don't like that one. That one's too yellow. That one's kind of orange. That one's darker. I like that one. All right, so then you just increase the intensity until you get your sky kind of, oh, look at that, kind of matching what's going on. But here's the problem. It's also filtering the rest of the image too. So I don't want that. I don't want it to do the background. I just want it to do the sky. So uh, we'll get it, we're, we'll tune it in for the sky where we want it, which is right about 76, 77%. And then um, uh, just another simple tip, tip to group that with the previous layer or just, just one layer down. We hold down our Option or Alt key and we click right between those two layers. So where, those, where there's a line between those two layers, hold down the Option key and click. That tells it to only do it to the layer below. So now we get our darker, browner sky, which we could always go back in and tweak some more. Maybe make it even darker now that we can see it. You can also pick your own color to work with as well. So if you like a better color, you could do that. And this is non-destructive, so you can keep going. Yeah, I definitely want to preserve luminosity. You can keep going and um, applying maybe more than one. Maybe you want to apply two. So that is how you can replace the sky with a better sky. Now, just to play around, again, to be creative if you want to, 
Let's turn these two off for a second. That, that will be our final image for this particular one. But if we just wanted to play, we could go in and say, ooh, well, what if it was something like this? What if it was the Milky Way? Well, we were to drag that in, make that nice and big, and put that right about there. And the same thing, we could use a blend mode. That's not going to work. We could use screen maybe. That's not going to work. So blend modes won't work in this case. Instead, we're going to double click and we're just going to try the one we've been using since that's been working so well. Why not? Yep, that's working great. And again, we would separate it out, hold on our option key and bring the rest of it in. And you can only go so far with this one before we start to kill it. But now that looks okay because she was already in a night environment or a sunset environment. So that actually looks pretty cool. Thanks, NASA. <laughs> yes, thanks, NASA, and thanks, Adobe Stock. Uh, let's go ahead and add a blend or add a layer mask to that. And again, I want to take it out of the ground. I don't want it in the ground. Uh, just mask it out and mask it out of the areas I don't want. So you can, you can have some fun with that. Blend modes, blend if. Very cool. And again, we can turn that one off, turn the other two back on, and we get back to our regular sky. And again, the one we did earlier, that one quick, easy, especially if the sky, um, if you have a uh, uh, new sky that matches the time of day or the time of day in this case really didn't matter. All right. So with that said, that's my quick tip for your sky replacement. Um, and thank you for watching. All right, Milky Way match for the shirt. Um, cool, cool, cool. I'm just looking at your comments. Make sure I didn't miss anything urgent. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Uh, as far as people always saying, well, I missed you live. People are watching the replay right now. I missed you live. When do I see you live? Um, I try to post my schedule. I haven't been doing it well uh, this past week on um, my uh, blog, but in case you miss it or in case you didn't get it, you can always watch, um, subscribe to Facebook page, the Creative Cloud page, or Creative Cloud Facebook page, the InDesign page, CC Design, and you will always be notified when a when a stream is scheduled to go live. So with that said, cheers everybody, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.